You guys have been asking really great questions in the comments and leaving great comments about your own experiences, but I really want to address that in a way that the whole class can hear so that anybody coming through can see the answers that I give and not just in the comments section because let's face it, comment sections are a bit of a cesspool and I'm a nano channel, no one really knows I'm here except for you fine people who have found me and thank you for that. So thank you for keeping my comment sections pretty cool, but let's face it, most people will keep their way out of it. So I am going to put these in video format so that maybe more can see it should they need it. Talking about asshole surgery for the hashtag asking. Thank you, Nana, for that one. Love it. Going to use it. Been using it. So for those of you willing to talk about your assholes, let's get on with this asking video. In the comments section, a lot of you have been mentioning a procedure called the LIS, which stands for Lateral Internal Sphincterotomy. And I find that really important to mention that that is the number one procedure that is recommended for fissures. And I want to go into this video to give some background context for anybody who might find their way here because they have an anal fissure. The LIS is a big part of the fissure world. So let's talk about that. and. Let me give you an idea from what I know is the difference between an LIS and a pigerectomy. Disclaimer first, I am not a doctor, I am not a medical expert, I am merely somebody who has had asshole surgery and I've done research before and after and this is just what I found out. So first things first, let's get into a little bit of background on anal fissures. In order for an anal fissure to heal, it needs blood flow. If you have a chronic anal fissure, that means something is restricting the blood flow to that area so that it cannot heal itself. Fissures will naturally heal themselves unless there is some quote unquote idiopathic reason or just some abnormal reason why it won't heal. Usually if either of these procedures are being recommended, the LIS or the fissurectomy, it means that conservative treatment has not worked and the surgeons are recommending this in order to restore blood flow to the area. Blood flow can be restricted for a number of reasons and your surgeon might be recommending it based on the suspected reason as to why blood flow is not reaching the fissure. In my case, it was because of a massive amount of scar tissue that had accumulated in the area. So keep in mind, Tissue that bleeds is tissue that can heal, so it is important to restore the blood flow to that area. Neither of these procedures actually heal the fissure directly. It restores the blood flow so that the fissure can heal itself. I didn't know that going in, then I know it now. So what happens in an LIS? The LIS is where the surgeon is going in and they are cutting your sphincter muscle. They are snipping your asshole a bit, just a bit. And specifically, they are snipping the internal sphincter muscle. And what that is, is the muscle group that does the bowel movement control. So the problem usually there is that that muscle group is too tight, so tight that it's like, you know, white knuckling, just like how the reason why when you white knuckle, the reason why it's turning white is because there's no blood going there. That sphincter muscle is so tight that blood can't get to the region and the fissure can't heal. It's the plight of us tight asses. So the LIS snips it, relaxes the area, and then blood flow is restored and the fissure can heal itself. Whereas, whereas, I have the fissurectomy and I had the fissurectomy. And what that does is that it just removed tissue. There was no muscle cutting, nothing. It's a much more conservative treatment. And so all they did was remove scar tissue and debride the area and they removed this polyp that had formed, which is the whole reason why I went to see this colorectal surgeon in the first place. They reopened the fissure as well so even if that scar tissue was completely healed over and I wasn't bleeding at the moment they cut it back open to make sure that those edges are nice and bloody so that it can heal and so all that tissue was removed while they were in there they thankfully removed a hemorrhoid that was problematic and they gave me some Botox which also kept the area relaxed so that it wasn't too tight as I was trying to heal there so here are some reasons why the LIS might be recommended over the fissurectomy. The LIS 
has a shorter recovery time. It also has almost immediate pain relief. At least that's how it's reported. I can't report that because that is not the procedure I had. It's a pretty good sell, right? Faster recovery time and quicker pain relief. And on top of that, it has a higher success rate of preventing recurrence. But all of that can be dependent on your situation, especially if you need to be back on your feet soon after the procedure, the LIS might be recommended. On the other hand, the fissurectomy has a much slower recovery as I experienced and it also has a much more gradual pain relief timeline. It took longer for the pain relief to occur and that is also what I experienced and it has a lower success rate of preventing recurrence and that's something that I may be experiencing now or in a sort of a wait and see situation with that. So if the LIS has a faster recovery time and has quicker pain relief and it has a better success rate with preventing recurrence, why on earth would anyone recommend a fissurectomy? Well, one word for that, incontinence. There is a higher risk of incontinence with the LIS. 90% of people do not experience permanent incontinence when they do an LIS, but that means that 10% of the people do. That's one in 10 people do experience quality of life altering incontinence. With the fissurectomy, there is no adverse effects on continence. And in addition to that, and which is one of the reasons why I don't think I always recommend the LIS, is that if you are of the childbearing years, plan to have children, or have had children vaginally, there is a risk of incontinence, or that risk does go up, especially in the long term. Even if you come through the surgery and don't have incontinence after the surgery, there is a risk that after going through childbirth vaginally, you may become incontinent because of the surgery. So these are all things to consider. If incontinence is something you're very worried about, which I was, ask your surgeon. Always ask your surgeon about the risk of incontinence with any procedure. It's really important. This can alter your life significantly. And make sure that you feel comfortable with the answer that your surgeon gives you. If the LIS is recommended and you're not comfortable with it, know that the fissurectomy is out there and ask about it and ask about it as a possibility. With all of that said, I'm going to be making a video addressing your questions very soon. If this video works out, we don't have to go on to a take six. We'll see. So thank you guys. Appreciate everyone from asking, being here, and appreciating these ass videos. For those of you who are here for some of my other stuff, they'll be coming out again soon. I'm just going to get through some of these Q&A question videos, and then I'll be on to some other stuff. Meanwhile, for those of you who are suffering from fissures, may your diets be full of fiber and your bathtubs full of hot water, and see you soon in the next video. Love you guys, and I'm going to outro. I'll tell you what, I've done so many takes of this video that I feel like the David Attenborough of asshole surgery right now. Just less refined and less knowledgeable.